So I came across this uh, uh, this story uh, connected to a, a academic paper. I don't think the academic paper has been published yet, but a paper circulating with uh, with the study. Uh, it's called um, "The Political Transformation of Corporate America, 2001 to 2022." And uh, what the uh, what the study does is it looks at how people have, it looks at political donations of CEOs, C-suite executives, board of director members, and senior managers across 9,005 different U.S. companies, right? So pretty big sample. That's 9,005 different companies, but then in each company, you've got all of this. So this is, they're using a basically... Uh, you know, the donation, you know, you have to disclose political donations and they're looking at those numbers. And then they're categorizing them. Uh, how many CEOs voted, uh, you know, Republican? How many CEOs vo not voted, uh, contributed money? So they, they view, in a sense, contributions of money as more significant, right? More significant than, uh, than voting. So they're looking at contributions of money. Uh, so... Uh, and part of the purpose of the paper is to think through this question. Here's the question. Clearly, over the last few years, uh, we've seen the rise of woke business, woke corporations, um, and, and, a, and a strong rise in so-called stakeholder capitalism and so-called stakeholder theory and and uh, corporate social responsibility and all the leftist buzzwords. And the question is this, right? Is this a consequence of the fact that, you know, corporations are still the way they always used to be, but in order to do business, in order to advance, in order to be successful, they have to virtue signal. They have to let their customers and the stakeholders and the politicians and whoever and academics in the world, they have to pretend to be leftist and woke. Uh, because, you know, and, and it's, it's just virtue signaling. It doesn't reflect a change in the actual beliefs of the people running the businesses. An alternative to that explanation is, of course, the no. Corporations have adopted and embraced stakeholder theory, social responsibility, woke stuff, uh, all this other stuff, right? As um, because they really become more left wing. This is what they actually believe. Now, of course, you can have both, right? They can have moved a little bit to the left, but they have to virtue signal far left. And I think that's what the data ultimately, you know, shows. So here I'm going to read you the abstract of the paper, and then we'll, we'll talk about it, right? And then we'll talk about it vis-a-vis -vis Silicon Valley, which I think is also interesting. The article reconciles conflating views about the political landscape of corporate America with new data on the revealed political preferences of 97,469 corporate directors and executives at 9,005 different U.S. companies. I find that average ideology for these individuals has shifted meaningfully to the left over time, changing from modestly conservative in 2001 to roughly centrist by 2022. So they haven't gone all the way left, but they not as cons no one as conservative as they used to be. And, and we'll, we'll talk about how they break down in a minute. This finding supports a middle ground position between conventional wisdom casting bi business as a conservative stronghold and revisionist views holding the opposite. The counterfactual simulations and a difference in differences design, uh, design suggest multifaceted causes for these changes and hand-collected data on corporate stances on LGBTQ-related legislation, coupled with an instrument of variable design, oh, these are all statistical methodologies, 
indicate that individual ideology has large effects on firm level political activity. That is the ideology of individual leaders has significant impact on how the corporation behaves or, how the, or what the corporation advocates for. Overall, I continue from the abstract, this transformation has profound implications for American politics. As the individuals comprising one of the most powerful interest groups, corporate elites, appear to be fracturing ideologically and to some degree even switching sides. So uh, it, this is, I, I think, super interesting. And it's super interesting that these guys have found a statistical empirical method to evaluate it that doesn't go and just ask these people questions because you know, I don't trust questionnaires. I don't trust studies that are based on questionnaires. So this is, this is interesting uh, how empirically robust this is. I don't know. It'd be interesting to see where it gets published. And, and uh, kind of the, I know you guys don't trust peer reviews, but peer review in, in these kind of studies usually will, will test the robustness of the, uh, the empirical, the real empirical evidence um, uh, involved. Anyway, I, I'm looking at some graphs. What, one, one of the interesting things is that if you look at different classes of management, this effect is different for each one of them. So if you look at CEOs, for example, in, um, in uh, 20, 2000, 2002, the study starts, CEOs are, are pretty conservative. They're pretty conservative. They, they, contributions are tilted dramatically to the Republican Party. And by 2022, um, they are still conservative, but a lot less so. A lot less so. C-suite executives less conservative than CEOs at the beginning of the period and at the end of the period. Boards, about the same level of conservatism, according to this, as C-suite executives at the beginning of the period, much more inclined to vote Democratic, or not vote, give money to Democrats, at the end of the period. So they are even more to the left, if we want to categorize it left and right, the Democratic Republican, even, you know, they, they've actually crossed over from the, to the moderate side. And senior managers start out a little conservative in 2002 and end up significantly to the left, significantly on the Democratic side by the time you get to 2022. So you can see I would ref this is somewhat reflective of age. I would say senior managers tend to be a little younger than C-suite or CEO, and they started out conservative, and now, they're, they're, of course, not the same people. Now they're, they're quite a bit to the left. Uh, so there seems to be this tilt. Uh, so that's interesting. It is interesting that, uh, you know, ideologically, American business has shifted. Ideologically, American business has become significant less conservative, and this is a tilt that did not happen uh, in a day. It's a tilt that's been started in 2002, and he's got, you know, year-by-year -year analysis, and you can see how, it, you know, how it has, you know, it, it has shifted, right, from significant conservative support, for example, among CEOs, to a lot less. One of the interesting things, but so... This suggests that it's not just virtue signaling, that it's ideological, right? And it suggests, but it suggests that it's not just that. that, that there probably is some virtue signaling because there's still a lot of conservative CEOs. But if you look deeper at that data, what it also suggests is, in a sense, a reflection of what's going on in our culture. Because what is really going on is what you've got is still quite a few CEOs who, are, who, who you would categorize as pretty conservative. Not a lot of CEOs who are moderates, again, based on this categorization, not mine. And then, whereas in the past you had very few leftist CEOs, today you've got two peaks on the significantly conservative and on the significantly leftist. So it goes up, down for moderate, and up again for conservative. So what we're getting is a very 
bifurcated political spectrum among CEOs and among other senior managers. Now, senior managers have always had more tilt to the left, but it's, and it's even more dramatic now, but it's still true that the one place where you're not seeing much movement, or if you are seeing movement, it's shrinking, is in the moderate space. You're seeing rise in the extremes. This is true of CEOs, it's true of senior managers, it's true of board members, which is fascinating. It, 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 and it's reflective of, in some sense, the tribalism of the culture. It shows that CEOs are not immune from these wider, bigger cultural trends. Maybe they are leading those trends. Maybe they're even helping make those trends a reality. So that, I think, is, is really interesting. Um, by the way, supposedly this also, if you, if you look at Great Britain, you see a similar phenomena. But those of us who are pro-capitalist and think that corporate CEOs becoming super leftist is not a good thing for capitalism, this is a real problem. Now, the fact is that there were super they were, when they were super conservatives, they weren't particularly capitalist either. But at least you had a, at least on one issue, they were right and you had a chance to move them in the right direction. I, I don't know. I, I, I don't think this is a good sign, even if you don't really accept the, the kind of left-right split as, as, it's, presented, uh, as it's presented today. Um, so that's interesting. Uh, the other thing that is interesting, the other one that's interesting and that is a little different in terms of its results is Silicon Valley. So they did the same thing just to Silicon Valley companies. Okay? And what you see here is that even in 2000, Silicon Valley was a little less conservative than other corporate America, but it was still right of center. And a big chunk of Silicon Valley CEOs would be categorized by the metrics of this system, the way these academics categorize people as moderates. And that there were very few in 2000 CEOs in Silicon Valley who you would consider, and this is more than CEOs, this is tech executives, as progressive left, as real leftists. What has happened over time is between 2000 and 2020, you've seen the number of conservative executives in Silicon Valley shrink, the number of moderates shrink, and the number of real leftists go through the roof, really increase. In 2000, so if, 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 if in 2000, you get kind of a, a slight slope towards conservatives in 2020, you get the opposite. You get a huge left, slightly, you know, with some conservatives at the tail. What's fascinating is the change between 2000 and 20 and 2024. In 2024, the number of, you know, far left tech execs has shrunk dramatically. And a lot of that, and the number of tech execs affiliated with the right has increased dramatically. And what you now have is two peaks, reflective much more of other CEOs in other industries, other executives in other industries. Still quite a few left-leaning tech execs, but even more right-leaning tech execs. Um, this is actually from a different study, right? Uh, it looks at the same thing. It looks at similar stuff. Uh, so Silicon Valley has recently splinted. And part of this has to do with the fact that, and you can see this in Silicon Valley, which is fascinating, the venture capital, many within the venture capital community have come out as right wing again, based on the traditional definitions or the current definitions, however, Trumpists, Republicans. 
Whereas founders in tech companies are still relatively left-wing, and, and uh, this, this analysis looked at all people in tech, so including uh, venture capitalists. But you're also seeing certain founders in tech, Peter Thiel is an obvious example, Elon Musk, but also, um, also uh, 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 you know, others who are, uh, what's his name? Uh, the guy in the uh, in the the guy who did Oculus, um, um, uh, you know, quite a few coming out more to the right, and then you've got people like Zuckerberg, kind of drawing away from the left. So you've definitely got a decline in um, in the left, and this is not about uh, you know. So 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 it's you know it's really fascinating. It's really fascinating to see this and how this plays out in Silicon Valley and what it means kind of for our future, particularly given that in, in this sense that these right-wing people are not good right-wing people. <laughs> I mean, I'm not talking about them as people, but in terms of ideas, this is not a pro-capitalist right. Palmer Lucky, th thank you. Pa Palmer Lucky is the other guy, but there, there are a number of them. There, there's a bunch of CEO Plantier, uh, 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 there's a number of kind of now kind of right wing tech execs, prominent tech execs, which four years ago in 2020, when Palmer Lucky indeed was fired of, from Facebook, nobody said a word. Now there are lots of them. So the shift towards a statist right in Silicon Valley cannot be it's a worrisome shift. It's a worrisome shift. This is not a shift towards free market right. Indeed, in 2000, the people who hear in the study, they are, they are categorized as right. Those people were more libertarian right. The Larry Ellison's of the world, the Sam McNeely's of the world, flawed, <clears throat> but pro-free market right. The right-wing tech people today a far more Donald Trump right than free market right. And that is not a good trend. That is kind of scary. And the fact that that category that's called moderate, which is probably the sanest right now, <laughs> in the sense that they're not crazy about violating individual rights over here on the right, and they're not crazy about violating individual rights here on the left, they're kind of moderate about them. They're the more free market types, I think, today would categorize themselves as moderates. That category has shrunk the most. Uh, so, you know, so that's, that's where we are. I thought it was interesting. Wanted to share that with you. But that is uh, right, left, and the, the, the bifurcation of American business around right and left and the dedication of, you know, uh, uh, executives around right and left is a pretty scary phenomena, I think. Pretty scary phenomena.